Hi everybody and welcome back to Tales of Wanderlust. If you want an update on my truck camper, then stay tuned. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I had filmed a ton of base camp videos when I was on my last trip. So I've just been working through that backlog of footage and posting as I go. And in the meantime, I have actually been here in Colorado since about the beginning of March. I've been doing some skiing, doing some fun things like that, but also working on this truck camper. So the base camp was sold about a month ago and I have since been working to get this rig, which is a 1994 Northern Light 610 ready to go. So today what I'm gonna do is take you on a tour of what I've done in here so far, what some of the plans are and how much more work this is than I originally expected. So with this camper, I purchased this back in September with the thought of slowly renovating it, getting it ready, and then going to Alaska this summer in it. My launch date to get to Alaska was June 1st, which it is now June 10th. And you'll notice I am still renovating. There are holes everywhere. There's wires hanging out. Now the change and update to my plans are if I can have this completely ready to go by June 18th, I'm gonna take the last two weeks of June off and drive from here in Colorado all the way up to Alaska, which is over 60 hours. But with everything that's still ripped apart, everything that has to get done, I don't know if I'm going to make it. Plans may be changing for the summer. I started working on this around mid-March, which that's two and a half months. So I thought I would still be able to get it done. The first step in getting this whole setup ready was building a custom metal platform for the back of the Toyota Tundra. This is a very small fiberglass truck camper. It is built for a small truck, like a Toyota Tacoma. In order to fit it in the truck, it did require to be lifted six inches off the truck bed. I ended up having the platform built out of steel. So a local welder ended up welding the platform together. We had to take a few different measurements. He actually had to build it twice. The first time it ended up being too long because the bed in the tundra actually has an angle on it, which he didn't account for in the measurements. So when he built it, it hung over the back of the truck. I wasn't able to close the tailgate and he had to redo it. Then when the truck camper went on the truck, the normal tie downs actually would lay into the bed rails of the tundra. So it would cause damage. I wouldn't be able to tie it down. We had to cut those off completely, which means we ended up building completely custom tie downs for the entire camper. So that was more custom metal work that was done and more things that we had to wait on. So that platform ended up taking probably about a month to finally get right, get bolted into the bed of the Tundra and be ready to go. So work on the truck camper started probably around the 1st of April. And that's when I started the real renovations. I figured, okay, maybe one to two weeks per system. So propane, water, electric, cabinetry. So maybe one to two months renovations. It has taken a lot longer than that. So it has now been almost two months and I would say we're probably about 50-60% of the way done and my furnace is still lost in the mail. I don't know where it is. To give you an update, let's start with cabinetry first. So I have pulled out all of the cabinets. The hardware, I just spray painted with Rust-Oleum paint. I used crud cutter to help prep all of these surfaces and then I primed everything. Painted it white, it is Polar Bear White by Bear Paint. And then I used a polyurethane on these cabinets to help finish them off and hopefully prevent them from scratching. The inside of the cabinets is still the same original wood but all of the cabinets are now bright white. Any of the cabinets that can actually be back here installed and are completed are done. So you'll see these upper cabinets are. And then the cabinets where I'm still putting stuff in, they're still missing. And today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. So Skillshare is an online community with thousands of classes that you can take. They offer classes all the way from creative, such as photography, all the way to things like cooking, metalwork, and a lot of different options. One of my favorite things to eat is 
Thai food and curry. I went on to Skillshare and there was an online class teaching you how to make an authentic Japanese curry. That got me going because you know how much I love cooking and there are hundreds of cooking classes on there and I've been having a great time browsing through them, picking up new things for myself to learn. And I'm really excited to try to take some of those learnings on the road. So if you want to give it a try, the first thousand people to sign up for Skillshare in the link in the description below will get a free month trial. Next, propane system. So you're going to see some of the things of the base camp come back into this truck camper that I really love. This is the exact same stove that I had in the base camp. I loved it so much that I literally just called Airstream Parts and I said, hey, can you send me a replacement stove for my Airstream base camp? And they said, sure. It is smaller than what was in here previously, but it's all I ever needed in the base camp and the glass lid folds down and it really opens up the counter space. So really love that stove. I also ended up switching the stove and the sink. The reason is I'm going to build more of an outdoor kitchen for this unit. So this stove you'll notice is pretty darn close to this upper cabinet. I am gonna be lining this all with aluminum to help protect it. So this really isn't within spec according to the manual, but it's a risk I'm taking, but I wouldn't recommend. And then I am putting the sink here so that it can be a bigger area. Since there's no bathroom in here, I need to have a sink where I can get my head in, I can wash my face, do all of that stuff, and not hit my head on these cabinets. So I really wanted to put the sink in the more open area and then put the stove in the smaller area. And then I'm also really focusing on making this as much of an overlanding rig as possible, meaning not moving stuff and having it secured down so I can just hop in the truck and drive away at any point. So with the sink, I'll actually have the soap and everything built in. This is solid walnut. So I'll just have a very lightweight plastic cutting board, put it right on here. And it's kind of like a built-in cutting board. So back to the propane system. Over here is where the old propane furnace used to be. It was an old suburban propane furnace. Supposedly worked completely fine. I never tried it. I pulled it right out, gave it to some friends. I have ordered a Truma because in the base camp I had a Truma and I actually loved it. It was super efficient, super quiet. The one I wanna put in here is a Truma Vario Heat. So I reached out to Truma. I said, hey, can I purchase it from you? They said no. So then I found videos of other YouTubers online that drove to the factory and had it custom built in. So I asked them, do you wanna sponsor the heating system in here and help me put it in? They said no. So I tried as many ways as I could to work with Truma USA. They weren't biting. So I ended up finding the Truma Vario heat from a camper store in England. I purchased it about a month and a half ago. So they shipped it over, but they wrote down the address wrong. When it came here and was handed to the local carrier, they just sent it back to England. About a month after I had ordered it, the company in England reached out to me and said, hey, we got your heater back, where are we shipping it to? When they shipped it back out, the tracking number did not update. I don't have any way to track it. I have reached out to the company now six times and I've gotten zero response. So my heater is either completely lost in the mail, being really slow to get here, or I have no idea where it is. So maybe someday I'll get a Truma in here. Otherwise, I'll put a Propex heater in here. I have a propane guy coming in one week to install the furnace and the stove and hook up all the lines. And I don't have a furnace. So from the propane system, we will go to the water system. So I already showed you what the sink was. Underneath here, you're gonna see the mess of all the other water stuff that I need to install. But in here is a blue technology filter. So this is something I have wanted for a really long time. It will filter the water coming from my fresh water tank. And that way I can ensure I always have the freshest, cleanest drinking water. It's also a really small one. So a lot of these ones that go under the sink are huge and they take up a lot of space. This thing, barely can tell it's in there. So I'm really excited for the inline water filter. The next big change to the water system is this big beefy water tank. So this is a 22 gallon water tank. It is bigger than the 21 gallon water tank I had in the Airstream. And it replaced the 11 or 16, I think it was 11 gallons that was in here. So basically doubled the amount of water I'll be carrying. By putting in a bigger tank, we're reframing an entire cabinet around the new water tank in order to fit that in here. With that said, I do have a composting toilet. I plan on building into here and I do have a shower. I'm working on that design. I will share that if it works and if it doesn't work. Basically, it's a one gallon jug. We'll see how that works. And then in this side, you're gonna notice that there's one small black spot. So 
One thing I really love about building out the camper and customizing it is based on my learnings with the Airstream, I can put a lot of different customizations in here. So this is actually where I'm going to put a small vent. That vent is going to allow heat to go in towards the water tank and keep it warm for winter camping. So even though it's already inside, when you build a wall around it, especially by the window and on the floor, it's not gonna be as warm as the rest of the unit. So by putting in that vent, it's gonna help a little bit more of that air get in there. And the one thing you find out when you're renovating these is RV manufacturers really don't build these things to be renovated. So one thing we found was in this cabinet, you go from the kitchen drawers directly into the metal box that holds the propane tank on the outside. And then beside the metal box, there is a maybe four inch section, which is where all the water hoses come in, a lot of the electrical, and then they sealed it off completely with a solid wall. So we had no way of getting to the back of the water intake, some of those wires. That was a lot of the stuff we were gonna have to change. So just cut a hole in the wall. And then when we're done, I have a panel. I'm gonna put a panel on there and then I'll be able to open it up and access that anytime I need to. So the nice part about renovating the camper as well is I know exactly where everything is. I know how everything works together. I now know I have access to everything. Next, we are moving on to the electrical system. So Battleborn Batteries sponsored this electrical build. I had Battleborns in the base camp. I reached out to them because I love their products and they said yes, they would sponsor the build. So this is their 270 amp hour game changer battery, which is heated for winter camping, but it didn't actually fit in any of the cabinets in here. I knew that going in and I knew there were gonna be some customizations involved, but you'll see I needed about an extra two inches on the cabinet. This whole cabinet was cut out, restructured, rebuilt to fit that 80 pound battery. So that 80 pound battery doesn't go sliding around when I'm driving and everything is nicely secured. This is also where the fridge used to be. And it was a three-way fridge, so it has two openings to the outside. I ended up using insulation, a lot of decor, a lot of aluminum, different things in order to seal up those vents. So this is a completely watertight space now. Quick tangent on that, my fridge is still gonna go here. It is a completely electric fridge, but completely electric still needs some venting. It doesn't have to vent outside, but you still have to have airflow. So that is why I now have a hole in my wall and I will put another vent there and the fridge will actually vent out through that hole. This is going to be kind of an awkward cabinet that sticks out. So the plan is to build something here where I can actually store my laptops and different things like that. So we'll see again, it's an idea. We'll see how it works when it's actually built. And then up here is a cabinet, which used to be a tiny little cabinet. I don't know if I have a picture of it previously, but you could open it up, you could put your hand in maybe that far, and that was it, because it needed all of that space and venting for the fridge. So we completely ripped out the inside of that cabinet too. It is now where the bus bar, the shutoff switch, the inverter, all of that stuff is housed. And again, the inverter needs a certain amount of circulation. So we built all that space around it, so it has plenty of ventilation. And then the nice part is once I put this cabinet door back on here, if the inverter's running and it's getting a little warm, especially on a hot summer day, I can just pop open the cabinet, let more airflow in, and increase the overall airflow for the inverter. That is the whole electrical system there. And then I do have 400 watts of ZAMP panels to go on the roof, 100 amp deployable panel as well. I have roof rails on the Northern Light, so I'm just gonna attach the solar to that by using some different struts and building it out. I did end up taking the truck camper up to Featherbilt up in Denver. They cut in this rooftop fan. So I have an escape hatch in here, but I didn't have an actual rooftop fan, which is really important in keeping it cool in here for Jasper in the summer. And when I'm cooking bacon, it helps to get everything out of the camper and not set off the smoke alarm. So I had them install that and they were really amazing when they did it. I brought up one of my solar panels and I said, hey, I gotta get four of these on the roof. If you can install the rooftop fan in a spot where I can still get 400 watts of solar, that would be great. So they actually designed how I'm gonna lay out the solar up there. They put this right in the middle. It's gonna kind of be like a pinwheel shape. And so that is all planned, but again, I have to do it. And then the bedroom, you'll notice that I actually can't sit up straight in the bedroom. I can if I pop this open, because this is actually a escape hatch. So if the hatch is open, I can sit up straight. But then I gotta crouch. While I am hunching here, 
in the bedroom area. So the bedroom, I really am not doing too much to. I painted it so that it has a little bit more of a cozy feel to it. It came with a mattress. So I'm gonna use that six inch mattress because there's not a lot of room in here. Notice I am crouching and there isn't even a mattress on here. So take away eight inches of this headroom and that's what it's gonna be when the bed is actually in here. There were also about three outlets in here. So I have had to run a whole bunch of new outlets. So in the bedroom here, I have put a 12 volt plug. That way I can put one of those adapters in there. I can put USB, USB-C, whatever I want in there. And then I did put in a USB outlet as well, just so I can charge my phone. Speaking of outlets, this cabinet up here, which really is meant for clothes, toiletries probably, because there's a mirror in it. I have now put in outlets, which is kind of odd for a closet, but that is because this closet is going to become my Starlink closet. So Starlink now, it is mobile. You can enable roaming on it. And I've had a dish for a little while. So when I start traveling, I'm just gonna put roaming on the dish I have. And I'm gonna be able to take Starlink with me, which is going to be a game changer and is one of the big reasons I got a rig like this so that I could go to more remote places and now I can have high speed internet when I'm there and I can work. I have also put in a 12 volt plug in there. So in the future, if Starlink ever decides to create a 12 volt adapter for their satellite dish, I can switch from the AC outlet over to the 12 volt and I no longer have to run the inverter just to run Starlink. So those are my big plans for this rig. It really has taken a lot longer to renovate it than I thought it would. Week and a half, we'll see if I make it to Alaska. Otherwise, I'll just use it here in the Rocky Mountains for the summer. And then I've saved up a lot of vacation for the Alaska trip, but I may end up taking off two weeks and going on some sort of trip, taking this out in the fall and really seeing where I can get to. So I'm really excited about this rig. I cannot wait to get it done. Hopefully in a few weeks, I'll be able to take you on a camping trip with it and we'll see how it goes. So thank you so much for watching everybody and we'll see you next time.